steeped in darkness and conflict, morally murky situations and a federation on the brink of war, Star Trek Discovery comes with a contradictory tone to the franchise from which it takes its name. Star Trek has always gleamed, and shown, accentuating the cheekbones of its Captain Kirks over the true grit of life in space. But on almost every front, Star Trek Discovery is a different kind of Star Trek. Created by Brian Fuller and Alex Kurtzman, it is set a decade before the adventures of Captain Kirk's USS Enterprise, as seen in Star Trek The Original Series. Instead, it dives headlong into a conflict between the Earth-headquartered Federation and its agitating neighbor, the Klingon Empire. The gestation of the series WASNT2 Smooth Fuller departed to focus on another project, and there were two delays to its launch date, one of which was required to secure actor Sonequa Martin-Green, who plays the lead, Starfleet officer Michael Burnham. The thing that's fantastic about Brian is his vision is specific, executive producer Aaron Harbert says. We had been with him from the beginning. We knew the spine, we knew what he wanted to do. It was terrifying to do it, but the time was the biggest issue. Waiting for Martin Green was critical, Habert says, completing a jigsaw that includes Jason Isaacs as Discovery's enigmatic, but not sure if has a good guy Captain Gabriel Lorca, Doug Jones as Kelpian science officer, Saru and Michelle Yeoh as Burnham's mentor, the USS Shenzhou's Captain Philip Georgiou. The first two episodes were set primarily on the Shenzhou, which is drawn to the Federation Klingon border as part of a ruse to unite the 24 feuding houses of the Empire. The third episode shifts the action to the Discovery, which is engaged in covert operations against the Klingons. Unusually for a Star Trek series, the main character is not a commanding officer, and a large portion of the action takes place away from the ship's main bridge. For us, it was important that the audience get a sense of what it feels like to not only work on a starship, but to live on a starship, Harbert says. So, you see scenes in quarters, you see slices of life moments. But just trying to give it just a different view of things as well. Sonic Martin Green as First Officer Michael Burnham in Star Trek Discovery, photo Jan Thidge central to the strategy of any Star Trek project is the franchise's fan bass and Keita winning their support, Harbert says, lies in acknowledging that canon is important. That is, that the new series will be consistent with the larger universe. It wasnt our choice to put it ten years before the original series, Harbert says. It's a dangerous timeline, and it's one that Brian, who's worked on so many iterations of Trek, could handle easily. Brian also has the street cred with the fans to be able to say, I'm going to do that. Shazad Latif as Lieutenant Ash Tyler, photo Jan Thidge Harberts is also hoping to beg the benefit of the doubt from fans. There are going to be things that are going to be tweaked slightly but I would say to the fans, hold on, because if it looks like we're breaking a rule, we might actually have a plan, he says. So there's sort of a method to our madness. The series has also brought in writers such as Nicholas Meyer, whose past work in the franchise, notably the feature film Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan and Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, are considered among its finest in storytelling, production design and cinematic action. We're going deep into the character stuff and we're not tying every story up with a bow. Aaron Harberts, executive producer Harberts says Meyer's strength lies in the telling of relatable stories. At its heart Star Trek II was a revenge story about someone who felt his life was taken from him, but it also then became a father-son story in the most profound way, Harbert says. Those kinds of relatable dynamics hook people in. Star Trek Discovery is the first Star Trek series produced properly off Beast Day that is, for the streaming platform CBS All Access. In Australia it streams via Netflix. Shifting off a major network effectively opens up the show's ability to handle provocative language and sexuality, and to include more explicitly violent imagery. Mary Wiseman as Cadet Sylvia Tilly, photo Michael Gibson Harberts concurs, but says the series would NT immediately embrace any of it. It doesn't all look good on Star Trek, he says. Violence is violence, okay, maybe we can show a Klingon battle with a bladed weapon going into somebody, you couldn't do that on network. Sex on Star Trek to a degree. Nudity on Star Trek not really. It just doesn't feel right. Language there are a couple of moments. The biggest difference, Harbert says, lies not in its tone but its structure. We're going deep into the character stuff and we're not tying every story up with a bow, he says. We have characters who are allowed to be a little grittier, a little more confused, a little bit more uncertain. Michelle Yeoh as Captain Philippa Georgiou. Photo Jan Thidge the series will also not shy away from killing off major characters. It's a time of war, and Captain Georgiou has an incredible line where she talks about how war is not a simulation, it's blood, and screams and funerals, Harbert says. 
I took that to heart because if we're going to tell a story about war then there needs to be an impact there. People have to die and not come back we've got to suffer loss because that's a deterrent. Because it's science fiction, maybe some characters will find their way back to us. But the deaths aren't gratuitous, the deaths have to mean something. In production design terms, the series is set a decade before the original series, which was notably for its stark, modernistic design, bright lights and primary colors. Discovery struggles to be a precursor to that, with a much larger scale in its production design, much lower lighting and richer use of shadow. The ship itself is a nod to some early design sketches by artist Ralph McQuarrie, who had been commissioned in the late 1970s to create a series of concept illustrations for a reboot of Star Trek that was alternately developed as a television series, Star Trek Phase II, or a film. Ultimately it became 1979 Star Trek The Motion Picture. We had designers who designed the ships, who were fanatic Star Trek fans, but we wanted to make sure that we gave people something new, just a little bit of something new, Harbert says. At a certain point you just have to say, if we just serve up what people expect, it just might not be as enticing. Harberts is also aware that the series is running alongside a ticking clock the already established space adventures of Captain Kirk and the USS Enterprise are, ostensibly, just a decade ahead. If we stay in this timeline we're going to have to eventually start making some adjustments, he says. But we also have to take care that there's a reason why you haven't heard of Discovery and Michael Burnham and Spock's foster sister. That's the challenge as well. How do we get out of that? Harberts described Star Trek as a naturally very political show. Looking at the original series created by Gene Roddenberry in the 1960s, you just look outside, he says. There was the United States and any of the conflict or any of the allegories were sort of through the lens of the United States. Star Trek Discovery too, he says, hopes to be reflective of the times. We looked closer to the divide that's happening within our own country, he says. The Klingons want to isolate, they want racial purity, the Klingons want to bring their houses together and be left alone. Interesting, provocative, and definitely something that's going on within the United States and elsewhere. Set against that is Starfleet, the exploratory navy of the United Federation of Planets, whose clumsy diplomacy is wrapped up in the epithet, we come in peace. Well, you can extend a hand, but what happens if somebody does and want to grab it, or take hold of it what does that mean? But Star Trek Discovery went streaming on Netflix.